This is Yaya Dabidi, speaking to you from Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, speaking to you on behalf of Brit and Hebrew nations. Are you from the tribe of Benjamin? Are you of Asian Israelite descent? Our group, our organization, our movement, we set ourselves, we set ourselves a task to discover this, to inquire about it, to research it. We look to prove or to bring evidence confirming the fact that many people now in, amongst West European or Western countries in general are of Israelite descent. The, the Lost Ten Tribes went to those regions. The Lost Ten Tribes are to be found now amongst those peoples. And not only that, not only are the tri Ten Tribes in general to be found there, but in many cases we may identify specific areas as those belonging to Burton, uh, uh, concrete tribes, tribes of Israel, sometimes even tribal clans, and uh, we may also in uh, some cases hone in on individuals and tell them that uh, there's a good chance that they belong to a certain tribes. Now we're going to go through a few questions and a little bit uh, certain information that enable us to, uh, to hone in, to, to as if to say, uh, be able to ascertain to a higher degree of probability if someone belongs to a certain tribe or does not. This is the beginning of a series and uh, today we're going to discuss the tribe of Benjamin. We'll go through different questions concerning character traits that would uh, to be found amongst the tribe of Benjamin and we will also, uh, after giving the questions, we'll also discuss uh, the sources that uh, justify these questions uh, relating to Benjamin and uh, you may judge for yourself. So there's something in it, there's something in what we are saying. There is truth there and it is a tool. It is a tool that can enable people on the, on the path of being able to ascertain the Israelite identity and their specific tri tribal ancestry within the Israelite uh, community. So some of the uh, different questions that we will ask, they are general questions. A lot of people will be able to say, yes, that's us. We have these answers. We have these characteristics. So we have to take everything as a whole. And this is a beginning. It is a uh, uh, wait, uh, listen, and, uh, and uh, judge for yourselves. We take everything as a part of a whole group of evidence. One point on its own does not prove anything, but several points altogether could be indicative. And these several points, if they are indicative of something, God willing, additional evidence will become available. And so we may be able to take everything all together. The different types of different questions we have concerning whether or not someone belongs to the tribe of Benjamin or not. Remember, Benjamin was the son of Rachel. Uh, Jacob had uh, four wives. Jacob was also known as Israel. Jacob gave a rise to the 12 tribes of Israel. His two major wives were Leah and Rachel. Leah and Rachel each had uh, handmaidens, Zilpah and Bilhah, who also gave uh, Jacob children. And altogether from these women, uh, the, the matriarchs came the twelve tribes of Israel. Uh, the chief wife, or not one of the chief wives of Jacob was Rachel. Rachel uh, gave birth to only two children, two sons, uh, Joseph and Benjamin. Joseph and Benjamin were the sons of Rachel, but they had a special place in the uh, in the affections of Jacob, and also a special place in the in the, uh, uh, the arrangements, the hierarchy of the tribes. So that's who Benjamin is. And uh, some of the questions we ask concerning whether or not someone belongs to Benjamin include such uh, such queries as, are you left-handed? Do you have left-handed members in your family? Can you use both hands reasonably well? Are you romantic? Are you sexually active? E even in the permitted sense, are there members of, of your family whom you could consider oversex? Does your family uh, tend to be clannish, stick together? Are you aristocratic, formal? Do you have a sense of breeding, manners of what is proper? Uh, uh, aristocracy, religiously inclined, introverted, spiritual, uh, more given to pray and uh, spiritual exercises than, than to learning. Uh, are you heroic? Do you have an heroic streak? Uh, are you self-sacrifice? Are you prepared to self-sacrifice yourself for a good cause if the need comes? Are you sometimes impulsive? Are you emotional? 
Are you prepared to take second place? But second place is what you want. You don't want third, fourth, or fifth. But second place is is, uh, is uh, something that you are prepared to uh, to accept as a first choice. This is also indicative of possible uh, Benjamin Knight ancestry. Another point is: Do you have Jewish friends? Are you attracted to Jews? Do you have Jews in your family? Are you Jewish? If you're not Jewish, uh, what is your attitude towards Jews? Because a good portion of Benjamin are now to be found amongst the Jewish people, though that is not the only community amongst which you find a descendants of Benjamin. French Canadians, many uh, French Canadians appear to be descended from Benjamin, and we will uh, discuss another talk on this matter and the articles and we're doing research on this matter at the moment but this is a point of interest that came up. Also we have other people such as the ancient the Normans who conquered England, the Belgians and so on who also are, uh, we find amongst them uh, uh, higher than the above average proportion of people descended from Benjamin. And so on we have other, other questions so we'll go through it we won't take very much time or We'll try to be as quick as possible, but also to give a reasonable, uh, uh, an o a reasonable overall picture of where the, uh, where the uh, questions can lead and what uh, what they're all about. So, first of all, are you left-handed? You, do you have a left-handed members in your family? Can you use both hands reasonably well? Are you ambidextrous? Uh, we find in the, the, the uh, in the Bible, the people from uh, Benjamin are uh, uh, in several places described as being left-handed, and. Uh, they are the only ones who are. Judges 3.15 it says, When the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer from them. Ehud, the son of Gera, the Benjaminite, a left-handed man. He was left-handed. He didn't save Israel. And uh, possibly Benjamin seems to have had a higher than normal uh, uh, number of people with, with, this, uh, with this trait. I, myself, am left-handed. People who are left-handed According to different uh, research, researchers and, and uh, studies, uh, tend to be uh, sensitive, they tend to be uh, artistic, introverted, will a slightly above average intelligence, we'd like to say, think so, and uh, also they have uh, advantages and uh, disadvantages. They also have disadvantages, they can sometimes have uh, trouble getting around, they have problems with coordination in some cases, they're clumsy. Uh, and uh, don't worry, I know all about it. And there, uh, there are other, there are um, compensatory factors to it, but uh, it, it's not as easy as it could be. All events, uh, Benjamin is described as having had a good portion of people in his tribe who were left-handed. Another possibility exists that the, the, the people of Benjamin were known as archers and the sling throwers. And who used their left hand? But it could be that even right-handed people were trying to use their left hand for these things because the left—it's uh, a physiological factor. The, left, the right and left hand sides of the brain control different parts of the body, and uh, even a right-hand person who uses his left hand may be able to gain a greater, a, a greater uh, facility yeah, and a greater ability. Uh, by doing so, he so trains himself. So this is a possibility that came up, that comes up, and uh, it's something for uh, someone else to study at another time. And anyway, we find in Judges 20:15 uh, concerning Benjamin that they had a left-handed sling-throwing marksman. It says that from the cities of the time, the children of Benjamin number 26,000 men who drew the sword, besides the inhabitants of Gibeah, number 700 select men. Among all these people were 700 select men, 700 who were left-handed. Everyone could sling a, a stone at a hair's breadth and not miss. Also we find in 1 Chronicles 12, verse 1, Now these are the men who came to David at Ziklag, while well, he was still a fugitive from Saul, the son of Kish. And among the mighty men who helped us in war, armed with bows, using both the right hand and the left, and hurling stones and shooting arrows with the bow. In other words, ambidextrous, he could use both hands. It says they were of Benjamin, Saul's brethren. So there we have it, uh, and uh, and they were good. They were good with the sling, with the sling, and with the bow. Now the sling and the bow have different trajectories. If you use a sling, according to uh, I'm not an expert on this. I don't know much about it. I read the books. Okay? I read a little bit of literature on it. A sling apparently has a trajectory that goes straight and then drops down. An arrow, and then you pull back an arrow, and you fire an arrow, and the arrow goes up, 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 on a gradual trajectory, trajectory, reaches the top, 
the height, they have a word for it at the apex, and then it comes down also gradually. So someone who fires a bow at a certain distance, he has to figure out how the arrow will travel before it hits the target. So too with the slingshot. Now this, well you probably pick it up, you work it out, it's done instinctively, nevertheless at some level, you're actually doing a computation, a, a, a trigonometrical computation, you're using geometry. So perhaps people who have the, 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 uh, the, the skills also may have, there may be a higher level of people with, the, with, with these skills or born with an innate talent in this direction from the tribes of Benjamin. This is something to, to consider. And uh, there were mighty men who specialized in archery and uh, this is uh, worth noting. Also, there are another set of questions concerning sex and romance. Are you romantic? Are you sexually active? Even in the permitted sense, for those you are, with whom you are permitted to have sex, are the members of your family who you would consider oversexed in comparison to the norms accepted in your community? Uh, does your family tend to be clannish, stick together, and stress family loyalty? Uh, do they do it, overdo it sometimes? Do they sometimes stress family loyalty? at the expense of other people when it is unjust to do so. Uh, also, uh, there's another point, another point is, alongside the fact of this having this uh, sexual uh, proclivity, the sexual tendency within, with you, within you, within your members of your family, is there an opposite tendency? Uh, are there those who are prudish, a little modest, a little more, much more reserved? We go to the opposite extreme, that is also indicative of possible Germanic ancestry. Uh, so these are points that are found in uh, a lot of people, but not doesn't... But uh, we take, as we said, we uh, take it easy, listen back, lay back, listen, and uh, you'll see that we're getting somewhere and, there, and uh, even... Make it, you can make a beginning, even if you cut out 50% of the population, so you only have 50% you keep on cutting out one percentage more and more percentages till you get a, a very limited number of people and uh, you can uh, more or less say that with a, a reasonable degree of, of uh, certainty that everyone who fits all of the criteria or a good portion of the criteria has a much higher chance of belonging to the tribe of Benjamin than those who do not. So let's go through some of the, uh, some, some of the questions and answers and some of the sources uh, Michal, 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 maybe there's a, there's a Michal, Michel, Michal is how the name is pronounced in modern Hebrew. Michal was the daughter of Shaul, Saul, the king of Israel, the first king of Israel. Shaul was from Benjamin. It says that uh, Michal fell in love with David. It says that Michal loved David. It, uh, and this, and, and this, this became known to, to, to Saul. Michal loved David. And this is the only place in the Bible where it is mentioned expressly, said in an express way that a woman loves a man. And not only did this woman, Michal, love David, but she did to be known. So this shows a certain uh, 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 independence, independence of feminine character. It also shows a certain romance, feeling of romance. And uh, David uh, did marry Michal, and he had to kill 200 Philistines and bring their foreskins to Saul in order to do so. And this shows a certain degree of, of uh, romance, of a romance uh, with the sexual uh, intonations behind it. Another question we had, are you sexually active even in the permitted sense? Are there members of your family whom you could now consider over sex in comparison to the norms accepted in your community. In other words, do they exaggerate, do they overdo it, do they overstep the mark? And are, are, they, uh, are they somewhat outstanding or uh, too much, too much in this direction? We find this tendency amongst uh, the people of Benjamin. In the book of Judges chapter 19, we are told how a traveler, a traveler from, from uh, Ephraim, but actually a Levite from another area, he was passing through the region of Benjamin. He stopped overnight into in a village called Gibeah with his concubine, his company, accompanied by his concubine, his common-law wife. He stopped overnight there. 
So then all the men of the village came banging on the doors and they wanted to take him and rape him. They wanted to rape the man. And the man uh, grabbed his, wo his woman and threw her, pushed her out the door. And the, so the men, instead of taking the man, they took the woman and they raped her all night long. And in the morning she died on the doorsteps. And this was uh, the occasion of a, a war, a civil war, which uh, resulted in the death of most of the tribe of Benjamin. Only a few remained after this war, and uh, from them came the rest. From all, all the, from those few who did remain, come all the present day descendants of Benjamin. But uh, we see a certain sexual lust in, in uh, an unnatural perversion and sexual lust in this activity. In this, and we also find other sources. The very name of uh, Benjamin, as a, or the second name of Benjamin also has indications in this direction. Uh, it says that when uh, Rachel, Rachel was, uh, was the wife of Jacob, and Rachel was the mother of Joseph and then of Benjamin. When she gave birth to Benjamin, she died. And we're told in Genesis 35, 16, 19, then they journeyed from Bethel. When there was a bit of, about a little distance to go to Ephrath, yea, Rachel, Rahel in Hebrew, Rachel travelled in Shul, childbirth, and she had hard labour. came to pass when she was in hard labour that the midwife said to her, Do not fear, you will have this son also. And so it was, as her soul was de departing, she, she, she died, she called his name Ben-Oni. His father called him Ben-Yamin. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath. That is Bethlehem. So Rachel gave the child the, the name Ben Oni. That was the name she gave to him. But his father called him Ben Yamin. Ben Yamin. But Ben Oni was the name that Rachel gave to her. So Rachel gave the name Ben Oni to the to the boy that was born. And Ben Oni. Ben in Hebrew means son, child of a son. Uh, Oni. Uh, several meanings. The uh, most uh, commonly accepted meaning is that it means suffering. It can mean suffering, hardship. So Rachel was uh, given birth and she is suffering and she died in, in the act of giving birth. So she gave the name to, of the child to the experience that she had gone through. Ben Oni. There is another explanation. Oni may also mean power or struggle. And that Rachel, in struggling, showed, put all of her power, all, all of her will into bringing this child to birth. And the child was born through the struggle that Rachel went through in order to bring him into the world, and she died because of it. So, in other words, Ben on him in son of my strength. Now, there's another meaning of the name, which was not necessarily that which Rachel intended, but sometimes uh, things have, have a way of getting beyond the intentions that we originally had. And it is contained within the word, with the meaning of the word in, in modern Hebrew and, and uh, medieval Hebrew, also ancient Hebrew, the word on, as well as meaning power, can also mean sexual prowess. So Ben Oni may uh, cannot may indicate that uh, the people from Benjamin had uh, an ex extra an extra degree of sexuality of libido in their makeup, and uh, there are people like this, and uh, this is a phenomenon. So it's worth noting. And uh, but we also find on the other hand we find it in just the opposite. We find the opposite tendency. The sages describe the tribe of Benjamin people from the tribe of Benjamin as serene, quiet modest, quiet, and sexually prudish. They held themselves back more than was, uh, than was commonly accepted. So they had also tended to go on this other tendency, and it does not contradict the idea, but it actually supplements it. When someone sees he has a, an inclination and tendency to go in a certain direction, in order to protect himself, in order to, to, uh, to uh, give himself some type of, uh, of uh, guidance, in these matters, he may uh, go to the ten to take an opposite extreme uh, in order to protect what, what needs protection. Another point on the verse we had was: Does your family tend to be clannish and stress family loyalty perhaps too much? So we described the, 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 what happened in Gibeah when they killed. 
Well, they caused the death of the woman. So then when this happened, the rest of the tribes of Israel got together and they uh, had a meeting and then they sent representatives to Benjamin and they said, hand over the guilty people, hand them over and we'll, we'll punish them. And uh, that will be the end of the matter. Benjamin refused. They refused to hand over people from their own tribe, people, these, these sinners, these perpetrators of foul deeds, these criminal lechers, murderers, the people of Benjamin refused to hand them over because of their, they were the only kith and kin and uh, because of their feeling of clannishness, of family. And uh, the result was a, a horrible war with dire consequences to Benjamin and also uh, quite a few casualties on the Israelite side as well. So uh, we see here a clannish, a sense of clannishness of sticking together, which uh, is found everywhere, but it doesn't matter. It's some, some people have it more than others. So this is another point that we can look for when we're looking for people to send from Benjamin. Another question is, are you aristocratic, formal? Do you have a sense of breeding and manners of politeness of what is done or what should be done and how people should behave? Do you sometimes catch yourself uh, being snobbish, uh, being overduly proud or, or looking adversely at, at the actions or, or the, the statements or the behavior of other people? against your will, be holding, hold, being, uh, having sn a snobbish, in, in, uh, a snobbish tendencies. We Sometimes a lot of us have this. Maybe everyone has it to some degree, but it, uh, in some people uh, it is more more present than, than in others. And this too uh, apparently was a, 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 a noted mark of people from Benjamin. We, uh, for example, it says that David, uh, David brought the ark up to the city of David, in other words, up to Jerusalem, because he, and he was, uh, he brought it up, he brought it up, and they were celebrating when they were bringing the ark of the covenant into Jerusalem, and they were dancing, and David was dancing, and, and uh, singing, and the people were singing, and they were all happy and celebrating, David was leaping and whirling around, and Michal, 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 the wife of David, the that was the daughter of Saul the king. Saul had been king before David and Michal had a sense of what should be done, of how things should be done and of how a king should behave and she saw how David was behaving she despised him because of it. It says so. It says in uh, 2 Samuel 6 23 now as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David Michal, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and whirling before the Lord and she despised him in her heart. And then, uh, then David came in, and uh, uh, and she she talked uh, in a, in in a belittling, demeaning manner towards him. She said, uh, "How glorious was the king of Israel today, uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maids of his servants, of the common people." He exposed himself, as if to say, he showed him what he was, who he was. As one of the base fellows, basically shamelessly uncovers himself like one of the lower class people. That is how she, Michal, the, the, the wife of David, the daughter of Saul, from the tribe of Benjamin, uh, spoke to David, her husband, and the king of all Israel. So this shows aristocracy, aristocracy it shows, shows snobbishness, it shows a sense of propriety of doing what is right. And it shows a lot of things, and uh, uh, perhaps if you two or others in your family have these traits, you too may be from, uh, from Benjamin, because there are indications that this, uh, this characteristic was quite common in the tribe, perhaps more so than in other tribes. And Saul himself, Saul was the father of Michal. Uh, Michal is always referred to as the daughter of Saul. Oh, Shaul, if she is referred to as the daughter of Shaul and not wife of David. Because uh, Michal, this is apparently what Michal considered herself. So she considered herself the daughter of the king. Firstly, and only secondly, the wife of David. And uh, she lived her life uh, according to this, uh, to this uh, self uh, accepted or self declared title daughter of Saul. And this shows uh, a certain. Uh, feeling of, of overbearing haughtiness uh, which uh, sometimes is necessary, it could be necessary amongst the ru uh, rulers. We may need it, a certain degree of, of people who rule over us to, to respect themselves because through respecting themselves are respecting 
the whole government, the whole country, but uh, maybe she apparently overdid it. Saul himself was described as being a head and shoulders above the rest of Israel and being exceedingly handsome. He looked the part, Saul looked the part, and in Hebrew the word head and shoulders above the rest of Israel is taken to mean not only physically head and shoulders taller than anyone else, which he was, but also better in his character, in his bearing, in the way he, he held himself. So this too shows a, a degree of natural innate nobility of aristocracy by which the tribe of Benjamin was characteristic. Another uh, uh, questions that we may ask is, are you religiously inclined? Are you introverted? Are you spiritually minded? Are you contemplative rather than intellectual? We have uh, uh, in Deuteronomy 33, 12, it gives a, a blessing on Moses to Benjamin, a run of God through Moses blessing Benjamin. On Benjamin, he said, the beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety, safety by him, who shelters him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. The people of Benjamin are likable, attractive. They are described as the friend of God. They are friendly. They have this innate, likable characteristics and good qualities about them. They are spiritually inclined. Uh, many of the, of the descendants of Benjamin are to be found amongst the Jewish people. Not only amongst the Jewish people, also amongst the Ten Tribes, but many of them are to be found amongst the Jewish people. When the Ten Tribes split away from, the, from Judah, originally you had twelve tribes, twelve tribes together, and then uh, ten of the twelve tribes split away and set up their own kingdom. Only Judah remained and Benjamin. Most of Benjamin remained with Judah. Later a good portion of Benjamin did go with the ten tribes, but nevertheless Judah, the present day Jews, who come out of Judah, also have a good num a good proportion of Benjaminites amongst them. And amongst the Jews today, we, uh, we have a, uh, all different types, all different types of people and a lot of different um, characters and characteristics, but also we are in the community I live in, religious Orthodox Jews, you have also different types amongst them, but you have the two main, uh, two main uh, phenomena uh, of those who learn, of those who are deeply religious, you have those who uh, pray a lot, say Tilim, say Psalms, they're big on, on uh, keeping the, the commandments, keeping the mitzvot, doing things as they should be done, praying one time, praying with, with devotion, uh, internalizing uh, the message, what you, what, you, what, you could, what you could call the spiritual aspects of the religion. And there are those who scholars, teachers, and students, who often concentrate on just learning the texts. They, they, they do the other things as well. They also pray, they're also religious, they're also devout and, and, and mystical and spiritual and so on, but they mainly concentrate on learning the texts learning the sources and understanding them going over and over and over, inside and out. And this is an intellectual exercise which has a very great spiritual uh, benefits. But not everyone can do it. And those who can do it traditionally are come from uh, Judah. So we may uh, assume that those who are, have the opposite but not the opposite, who have the other, go in the other direction of uh, con uh, emphasizing spirituality May well be more from Benjamin. So this is another point worth uh, considering. Another question is, uh, do you have an, a heroic streak? Are you a bit of a hero? Not necessarily a hero. You don't go out running around like Superman or like uh, some, some of the people from the movies, rescuing maidens and, and, and writing the wrongs and doing all kinds of things like this. But do you have this... Uh, this uh, potential within you to do such things in certain circumstances because not everyone does and apparently those who do are some to, are to not that many or they're not an overwhelming proportion of the population and uh, it seems that uh, amongst the people of Benjamin there were uh, as a higher proportion as compared to other those other 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 groups of people who were heroic, who have this heroic tendency. 